I want to let you guys know this episode was filmed at the Mint TV of Romeo, Michigan. Guys, I hear it all the time. Everyone wants a podcast. If you or someone you know is looking to pull the trigger, you can contact the Mint TV today for studio rentals. Just email mitt.tvpodcast at gmail.com and schedule an in-studio visit and free consultation. That's M-I-T-T dot TV podcast. You can't disrespect the Lord like that. Do you hear he's making his own Gollum movie? Yeah, him. Uh, isn't Peter Jackson also backing it? I think so. What's fucking crazy? That dude has never won an Oscar. Which oh Andy Circus yeah yeah the I think if anything it should have been Dawn of the Planet of the Apes like have you seen them all I, yeah I've seen them all Dawn is my favorite one Dawn is the best one and I actually forgot how good Dawn was until I rewatched everybody, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes I think everybody forgot how good those movies were yeah well that's admittedly though War for the Planet of the Apes was not as good as I remembered it being it was still good but it was slow. I like it though. I like how you like how slow it is. Yeah, I was like, I was like, all right, this fucking war we're playing the East Man. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Like, it makes seen this movie in seven years. That it was slow because like there is a war, but almost all of humanity is dead. Mm. I didn't like the Woody Harrelson character. I think that's what it was for me. Maybe it's maybe it's because it was Woody Harrelson. (laughs) Every time I see Woody Harrelson, I just keep thinking of Zombie (laughs) Land. That's true. That or freaking uh, white men can't jump. That's what I was thinking of. Have you ever, you ever seen that movie? I actually haven't. It's it's pretty it's pretty good. But um can't find his GD Twinkie. But no, it's uh I thought I thought the, the coolest thing about the Planet of the Apes movies for me is that you can literally see like an evolution take place yeah. over the course of X amount of movies. Like the 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 fall of humanity and then the rise of the apes, and you can see it gradually and that's why I really liked Kingdom mm-hmm. was because it's like, oh, this is this is this is what the apes are like when they're almost at their apex. You know what I mean? The, the girl in that movie, she actually did a really good job because mm-hmm. I hated her by the end of it. Yeah, dude. Well, because that was another thing, too, that I really liked is that it kept the sort of... It's not really a theme, mm-hmm. but sort of the... Like the emotional crux like of the first three movies is the whole idea of trust. You know, can we trust each other? Because even in, and I forgot about this until I watched Rise of the Planet of the Apes again a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, when Caesar has to go into that sort of pound and stay with the other apes. Obviously, he wants to go back home with James Franco. Take me back, take me back. And then James Franco, reaching the climax of the movie, is finally able to take Caesar back home. But then Caesar decides to stay because yeah. he doesn't trust him anymore because he sees the leash that James Franco's holding, and so th- and then Dawn takes it to a whole new level because then it's you have the human characters that keep fucking up, but then you have the one ape Koba who's stirring the pot in the background, which his mocap and his v- VFX dude that guy is crazy was He's amazing such a good actor. Have you seen the the side by side video of the when he's drinking the yeah. <laughs> yeah. When he's drinking the bottle what blows my mind about about that scene is and I think about motion capture in general is just like again you have somebody in a suit and when you're filming a scene like whether it's like the camera in front of them or bits and pieces, whatever. I mean, it's covering whatever's behind him yeah. and everything. And they're able to fill in those gaps so seamlessly when they make him like a scrawny ape. What's crazy is like they completely had to reinvent basically the mocap suits mm-hmm. for those movies. Like in the first Rise of the Planet of the Apes, it was a really crude looking piece of shit suit that they had like gaps was it? Tape all over. Yeah. Look at look that one up. I want to see what that looks like. Because <laughs> the uh they were like we they wanted to shoot on location that was never done right. before. So they had to make suits that instead that the dots usually they uh take the light and they retract the light using UV rays. Um and then that light feeds in the information. Mm. Yeah, go up. Hold on, go up. You see where the yellow dots on them? That one. On the right, a little bit more. Yep, that one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it looked like that. So it was really crude. There was gaffer tape all over it. It had just exposed wiring. Um, and what they did was instead of having those sensors get the light, because the sun would just mess it up, mm-hmm. they would have the sensors emit light. Mm. And then they would have all these like different trackers along whatever they were shooting, and uh, it would find that light in there. 
How the hell did you do that with Gollum in Lord of the Rings? Oh, that was all on a set. It's actually yeah. kind of funny because I think in the first movie, he was just wearing like a green morph suit. It was yeah, it literally looked it was like a onesie. It was like a giant yeah. onesie without anything on it. I think they literally just used that as like a a reference. So they yeah. just kept animating Gollum over his movements. Yeah. Yeah, see the little whatever white suit he was wearing. Which was kind of funny because yeah. it just looks so out of place. Yeah, it's like he's in a giant. Here, turn, get the audio out of here. <laughs> there we go. We don't want to get copyright. Oh, is there a breakdown? Yeah, we're there you go. They didn't even put dots on his face. I never even knew yeah. that. So they just completely like. I wonder if it's almost all hand animated, like referenced. That's kind of what it looks like. Is that they just based it off of facial reference? Yeah, and then like there's a part where he spits, uh -huh. and he always talks about how like that's his spit. Oh it yeah, in the movie. In, wait, in uh, in Gollum. In, in Gollum, oh, I don't it. know if it was that scene, but it was in one of the Lord. Of the it was when they're making uh like potato soup. It's the meme potatoes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it was that yeah. scene. <laughs> it but, was that scene. And then like yeah, like then they completely redid the suits. So like right there, mm -hmm. uh, two pictures over the highlighted one. That's the newer suit that they were using. Nope, two pictures uh, on the right side of the highlight. Or the, yep. yeah, yeah, see, that's the new suit. It's all nice looking. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see that it's not like sensors anymore. It's just these little balls that are emitting light all the time. Right. But I thought that was so fucking cool. Yeah. And then he was like, I, I love when he was explaining how to be an ape because then he'll just like randomly bust out and start like walking mm -hmm. like an ape. And he's mm -hmm. like, you know, they're actually, their rib cages are actually connected to their their torso and i'm like that's fucking weird <laughs> yeah no it is like it's um it, like even in like even in rise like even in rise the apes are so convincing like i don't mm -hmm. think you can see like uh like the quality of how they're able to imitate apes never improved because i think that in rise like they were already fucking there like they somehow figured it out yeah because like corridor crew it's consistent actually just made a video talking about they, they were with the vfx director mm -hmm. i think for war and dawn and then he worked on rise mm -hmm. uh they talked with him and they showed the scene where caesar was in his cell at that uh impound and he was just like staring and looking around and mm -hmm. uh i think it was ren he was just like we fucking made it this yeah. is the best thing ever right thing will get better than this and yeah it just kept improving right like koba looks scary insane dude yeah he's a scary motherfucker like my friend when we watched all these movies uh when i was in colorado i made him watch the whole trilogy mm -hmm. i was like we're watching this trilogy because the new yeah. one comes out soon yeah and uh he was like still looks like cg i'm like shut the fuck up dude just admire how good it looks yeah i mean like 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 here's the thing you know i'm, I'm very much like you where it's like wow like even if it's like i go back and i watch lord of the rings you know obviously Gollum looks a little dated compared yeah. to now like yeah. they even they even had Gollum return in one of the Hobbit films, and he looks much better in that film. But I can still go back and really appreciate it. But you know, even in even in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, when I can tell, like, oh, it's a little bit dated, I was still like, it's still freaking crazy, like what they were able to do, you know? Because I didn't see Rise of the Planet of the Apes when it came out in theaters. I didn't. I saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes yeah, first. I saw, I saw Dawn and War. I don't know. I feel like I did see Rise. Yeah, but I'm not sure. But yeah, no, dude. It's like kind of like within the Pirates of the Caribbean, like Davy Jones mm -hmm. and his whole crew. Mm -hmm. Even watching those movies now, you're like, this still looks. Convincing. That's the thing, man. That's the thing, man. Is I always, I always think anytime I watch a movie with really crappy CGI, I always think of Davy Jones, and I'm like, guys, that was 2000, like <laughs> six or seven. Yeah. What are we doing? You know. And I think a lot of it has to do with, um, and maybe you can comment on this. Do you think that? VFX artists are just being spread too thin and that's why we're sort of seeing a dip in quality. I definitely think it depends. I think it depends on who's making the movie. Yeah. Like for example, with Marvel, there's no union for VFX artists. Right. Which that's a big thing sucks. right now. Yeah. yeah. So they're cheaping out on artists. So like there's a lot of incredible VFX artists mm -hmm. in India, for example, and they'll do it for a lot cheaper than people in America will because of cost of living and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they just want to get their name out there. So they'll 
hire these studios in India to mass produce the shots that they don't have time for. But mm -hmm. the ones that are in America, they are they are completely stretched thin. Like they are working on really tight, uh, like what's what's the word I'm looking for? Time frames that mm -hmm. uh, just are kind of impossible to work mm -hmm. with. Especially if you're Marvel and you're pumping out like what three movies a year, like what they were doing. Yeah, dude, that shit was mm -hmm. insane. Like, I think the only Marvel movie I'm actually excited for right now is Deadpool. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I don't think I've watched one since uh, No Way Home. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't remember if No Way Home was the last one I've seen. Obviously, but I'm like, I'm ex in the I same boat as you. Movie, yeah. I'm ready for, but I'm, I am ready for Deadpool because I'm like, okay, maybe this will be the one that gets me back, back into it. Because it's funny, I just watched. Infinity War and um, Endgame over the weekend, mm -hmm. and number one, like the Thanos CGI, especially in the beginning, yeah, is so good, it's so good, it's so good. And then, like the thing that made me so upset with No Way Home in particular was like it wasn't incredible. I, I loved the movie a lot, mm -hmm. but like they kind of fucked up and half-assed the CGI, especially on like, uh, like Toby. Mm -hmm. like his suit in some of those scenes looks so weird. I remember someone did a breakdown that I saw somewhere on YouTube a while back. And they, they said that the, um, like the physics. Yeah. It's like the shot where they all land together is like a little wonky or something. Somebody did it's a breakdown. Too light. Like yeah. they just landed like a feather and I get he's Spider-Man and, mm -hmm. but you can't use that excuse for everything. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm hoping that Marvel can bounce back because, again, rewatching Infinity War and Endgame, I'm thinking, man, this was like the golden age yeah. of being a film, of being a film fan, just in general. But, like, like how you're saying earlier, you know, like these people that are in charge of building th th these entire worlds, mm -hmm. you know, because you get, I watch Infinity War and Endgame, and I sit back and I go, I wonder how much of this is real. You know, obviously someone like Thanos or the other CGI characters and the creatures, obviously those are computer generated. But then you look at the environments and you go like, okay, you got like, take the opening scene, for example, when Thor is is pretty much nearly dead yeah. and Loki gets killed. I'm looking around and I go, I bet like maybe 50% of this is actually real. People have to make that, dude. And it's you, insane. You know what's even crazier? It's just like, I feel like we're slowly getting to a point to where... It kind of just depends on whether or not you want to spend the money to have to, to have the physical location mm. or to just completely do it all digital. Because like mm. we're getting closer to the point now, especially with like Unreal Engine, to mm. where you maybe won't even have to do anything mm. on location anymore. Mm -hmm. But I still personally like doing both. Right. Like, I think using both is the best way to possibly do it. Have you seen um, The Creator? The Creator. What is that? Can you look up The Creator? I feel like when you see the poster, you might know what I'm talking about. This came out last year. Oh Yeah, I've seen the trailer, but I haven't seen the movie. Okay, you got to see this movie because... So, Gareth, the director was Gareth Edwards. He directed the 2014 um, Godzilla and then also directed Rogue One. Yeah. So this was the sci-fi movie he um, released last year that he directed. And why the fuck is Tom Cruise in the cast? There's no way. It's a fan cast. It's a fan There's cast. There's no way. Okay. Whatever. He was the actually, he was the There's blade no of way. grass. <laughs> he was the blade of grass. He was the blade of grass. He's whoever was running fast as fuck in the movie. Did you see the new Deadpool trailer when uh, Ant-Man's helmet opens up and you see a skull? Yeah. And then Deadpool's just like... Man, Paul Rudd finally aged. Dude. It's so funny. So what's it called? Um, but so you should watch the creator because Gareth Edwards' mentality was like, look, we could either spend you'll probably spend a lot more making this film if you actually film it on green screen and create these environments digitally mm -hmm. versus us finding the absolute most talented but smallest crew and actually travel the entire world to these exact locations that we actually want to film at and just using it afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and so there's a crazy scene in the movie. They did a huge VFX breakdown. I did not, I do not remember seeing a single behind the scenes shot where somebody was wearing a motion capture suit or it had any sort of dot on their face. 
You have to say that robot that's right there. Yeah. Those shots. That's I can tell that's completely just drag and dropped into your scene with. Yeah. But so like, for example, in the film, uh, they go to this village Mm -hmm. and in the context of the film, it's robots and humanity living together. So they go to this village and they're cutting all these different shots. And there's a shot where a robot like digs its hand into this um, basin of rice and you're zooming in and you can see like the fine grains of rice interacting with the metal hand and the metal hand just picking up little bits and pieces and everything. And then it does a VFX breakdown and it's literally just someone's hand just doing it. And I'm like, how the fuck do you do this? That'd be so cool. If, if is, I, I guarantee it'll happen one day. But like, say you want a robot character in your movie. Mm-hmm. You could just have a, the actual robot character mm-hmm. in your movie. I think that'd be so mm-hmm. fucking cool. Oh yeah, without having to create it in yeah. in post, I I bet that if somebody really wanted to do something like that, I bet they could. Because you've seen Interstellar, mm-hmm. so you know the big giant Rubik's cube. Yeah, it was real. Yeah, yeah, like those are real, and like they had you know the actor puppeteer it in the back. Yeah, I bet that you could honestly, like with today's technology, do something very similar to that and get something close. To what you're seeing here as some sort of puppet speaking of puppet you know? ears, it's kind of off topic but it was a long time ago mm-hmm. uh 1980 they uh were gonna make a hulk movie mm-hmm. and they canceled it and they were developing this um this like puppet hulk mm-hmm. and like dude they made his arms go from like normal arms like yours and mine and they just expanded it with like foam and stuff oh like it did it inflate or something yeah dude it was so cool I don't know if you're going to be able to find it because I found this out on TikTok and I was like, that is so insanely awesome because like they were showing clothes rip off Mm -hmm. and stuff. I'm like, that is probably the sickest shit I think I've ever seen in my life. If I find it, I'll send it to you guys. Yeah. That thing was so cool. Yeah. I mean, if if you can do anything practically. Yeah. You know, why not? Yeah. Do it. I think like uh, one that always blew my mind. You see Force Awakens. Yeah. You know, the bread. Yeah. The bread. That just... (laughs) <laughs> she puts a little thing in there and it expands. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that in the theater going, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I go online and that's like what half the people were talking about was the expanding bread that they did. Like that was sick. I think, um, I don't know. I just, I love CGI and stuff, but I also have a love for like the practical side of effects. Mm-hmm. Cause like it would have never like became a thing if practical was mm-hmm. always going to be the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you got to find a way to sort of blend them both together the, mm-hmm. as best you can. Like, um, I just watched, I just rewatched it. Um, nineties. Yeah. Have you it's seen right there? See the practical effects tests on the right. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's like a giant. Yeah. Hulk. Dude, this thing is so cool. And like, it's massive. It, what is this? Like a Stan Winston. I don't remember. Puppet? I'm I'm not sure, but like, dude, the fingers move really fluidly. Everything, mm-hmm. like, this is the arm. Oh wow! Whenever they decide to start it. Oh, yeah, man. there you go. Oh, and is that supposed to be a, the sleeve? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> like imagine this being in like a 90s hulk movie that'd be so cool yeah and this whole thing got canceled yeah and then like the fingers they move like just so nicely i don't know how to explain it i'm feel like i'm nerding out too much on this shit <laughs> no you're good this is what this joins for man yeah so they sort of built it like how they did like the t-rex in yeah and they got the guy in the on the bottom like moving his fingers yeah. and shit i'm like dude this is so cool that's probably how they do it at like um like Disney theme parks. Mm-hmm. You know, have you ever seen footage of or been to the Avatar ride? I haven't, but I've seen like pictures of those animatronics without like the skin and stuff on. Yeah, I'm like that is so. Have crazy. you guys seen the Spider Man one that they have that like swings around the park and then sometimes it messes <laughs> it up? Yeah, yeah it it'll crashes. crash and do a tumble and be like, "My bad, sorry." <laughs> What's it called? Um, but the at in the Avatar ride. You know, because you have the Navi, which is the the giant, tall, blue people. Mm -hmm. Um, The footage of that and them moving is so fluid. It's really, really crazy. 
Um, I don't think it's this one. It's like a river ride. The one in their tank. I love the one when they're in the tank. It's so cool. What do you mean? What, like in Disney? Yeah, they have like an Avatar character in a tank that mm. like twitches and stuff. I'm oh, like, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, I, I've never had the urge to go to Disneyland or anything or Disney World, but mm -hmm. I think I would go just to see that type of stuff. I remember I thought it would have been cool. I mean, I went, I've been there as a kid, mm -hmm. but then, you know, as an adult, I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's Disney, you know? Um, but did you know that that land that Disney world is built on isn't like us land? Oh, it's not. No, they own it. They, Disney owns their own. Oh country. So yeah. They, that's I think why I did they hear can that. Mark up their prices so fucking high. I think I did hear that, which is crazy. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's how is that fucking legal? <laughs> yeah, I know. Here, skip to the end because I think uh, that Navi character is somewhere towards the end. It's either that or do you see the most replayed section where the, yep. Yeah, see? That's the animatronic. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Like, look how quick it moves and how fluid it is. But then I have friends that say um, that like the Star Wars ride is bonkers. Yeah, um, I've heard that too, like the Millennium Falcon and everything. The Millennium Falcon, and then there's one called something of the Resistance, Age of Resistance, Rise of Resistance. I know I what you're know. talking about. I don't know the name of it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like you're in this pod and you're driving around like a Star Destroyer essentially, and you see Kylo Ren and his lightsaber comes through, and it's all this crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I heard, um, I heard it's. Awesome. Yeah, Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, there's some footage. Um, but like Kylo Ren and General Hux, like those guys that you see in there, uh, half the time they're like animatronics. You know what's crazy is how perfect the lighting is on those rides. I'm mm -hmm. like, holy shit, dude. That's so cool. That's the one thing you always have to sort of give them props for is that their rides are typically 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Like they're badass. And again, I haven't been... I haven't been to Disney since I was in fifth grade. So I had to have been like 12 years old. Mm -hmm. But I remember uh, there was a dinosaur ride at Disney and it's terrifying. It is so terrifying. Now, granted, it, it was a bit of an older ride. And so the animatronics are um, like, they're just not the best. And I look, I looked it up recently and I think the ride's honestly just falling apart. You know, I think one of the coolest things like about rides is like Pirates of the Caribbean was based off of like a, a fucking ride, ride. dude. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, dude, created one of the best series ever out of a fucking theme park ride. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope they do another one. I do too, <laughs> especially now that Johnny Depp there's, is clear. There's unfortunately two more in the works, but neither of them are Johnny Depp related. One's with Austin Butler, and the other one is with Margot Robbie, which I don't understand. Austin what? Butler, I feel they like... did say they offered Johnny Depp to come it back, down. and yeah. he gave them an undecided answer at this time because mm. he is rightfully upset about them ripping him out of it, and then just being like, "Oops, you want it back?" Yeah, they did. You know, I mean, they did James Gunn on a more. They did what they did to James Gunn, but on a more Dude, extreme level. Speaking of, have you seen that Superman suit? It looks okay. I like it a lot. You like actually. it? Yeah. I think it I looks love a little it too. bit like thick, mm -hmm. but I, I like it a lot. I think he has like the red underwear and everything still mm -hmm. too. I hope they have like the yellow S on the back of his cape. That'd be sweet. I mean, I have to see, man, because this is my problem with DC is that you have all like DC is really just a bunch of gods. Yeah. And then you got Batman. <laughs> yeah, fucking Batman. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? For some reason, he just is able to kill all of them if he wants yeah, to. Yeah, I'm like, so you guys are just making him a scapegoat for being just a badass? I understand, but I don't know. That's like Superman. I didn't like Superman for the longest time mm -hmm. because he's just too strong. He's just... He's OP, yeah. He's too OP. And like, I feel like it is really hard to make a good Superman story. Mm -hmm. Like, I like Man of Steel a lot because I mm -hmm. feel like they did good about it. I feel like the only way you can really make a really good Superman movie is if you go into the more like psychological side of mm -hmm. Superman. Because if you're just having him fight everything, yeah, I loved 
I love Man of Steel. Yeah. And I remember, I remember when it first came out, I wasn't in love with it because I thought it was so much action. And I thought it was a little too much action. And then it really grew on me the more and more I rewatched it. Because I, I think what I had to take out of my head, and I think what a lot of people had, had to take out of their head, was that it's Superman, not the Dark Knight. Yeah. I think everybody wanted Man of Steel to be the Dark Knight of Superman. Like, it is darker. It is, it's yeah. It's not as dark. Like, there's some mm -hmm. comedy, there's some good action scenes, but it's mm -hmm. not supposed to be dark. And people are like, Superman killed somebody. I'm like, Who what gives the a fuck shit? was he supposed to do? Dude, uh, Zack Snyder had to get permission from Christopher Nolan to kill Zod. Really? Yeah, which is really, really weird. You know, they had to have like a whole discussion about it because I think Christopher Nolan was of the same mindset of like, you can't, like, you can't have him kill anybody in at least the first one. Because mm -hmm. I mean, Batman, you got to remember, Chris Nolan did three Batman films at that point. And it was a big moment when Batman killed Harvey Dent in the second film. Yeah. Um, so I think he was kind of, you know, reflecting that on Man of Steel. Zack Snyder was like, I'll be fucking awesome. <laughs> You know, which it was cool. Like it was like I thought I didn't mind it as much. Um, what but uh, trying to kill a family is that okay? Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. That's right. He Zod was trying to kill a he family. Trying to kill a family. Yeah. Um, but no. And then the thing, the thing I think really screwed over their whole um, cinematic universe with with Zack Snyder was well, number one, um, the Snyder cut of Dawn of Justice was way better than the oh, theatrical yeah. one. You see yeah, that? Yeah, me and Ethan watched it. As soon as it came out, he's like, we're watching it right now. And we watched all Dude. four hours when it first came out. Dude, um, no, I'm talking about, um, like, you're thinking Justice League. Oh. I'm talking about Dawn of Justice. Don okay. Yeah, no, I didn't see that one with him, but I did see it, yeah. You did see it? Because I remember watching it in theaters and thinking, this is a really weirdly edited movie because it would just cut to black at certain sections and then just skip forward a bunch of a bunch of times. And then you watch the extended cut. Every time it cuts to black, it's really what was missing in the theatrical cut was like an elaboration of the scene. Like the very beginning of Dawn of Justice is essentially this group of bandits framing Superman for killing these people somewhere in the Middle East. Yeah. And like there's bullets flying by. And so your assumption while you're watching the theatrical cut is like, okay, so... They think Superman shot these people. Like, what's going on? And then in this extended cut, they burn the bodies to make it look like Superman used his laser vision to kill these people, which I go, it's still a little weird, but I guess it makes more sense. Um, but then, like, no, the the Justice League was, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was awesome. I feel like I, I don't blame Zack Snyder for what happened with his whole DCEU thing. I think mm -hmm. it was Warner getting really greedy because, mm -hmm. like, I don't like the fact that we got Man of Steel and then we just kind of rushed into like yeah. more and more characters. And I'm like, mm -hmm. can we, like, Marvel did this over the accumulation of like 10 years. Can we just mm -hmm. load this down a little bit? Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm excited for James Gunn's new movies out. You know, he's already working on Supergirl. No, I, I, but it doesn't surprise me because I feel like he's working on a ton of shit. Dude, he is just back to back to back. I'm like, dude is going to have even more white hair than he realizes but, afterwards. But he, <laughs> yeah. He's not doing Supergirl, though. He's just the producer. Oh, he's just the producer? Yeah, okay, cool. he... I feel I forget what he's directing next, but it's not, it's not Supergirl. He just is producing that one. There are a lot of funny memes with this picture. You've yeah, seen I've seen the people just Photoshop them. Yeah. I've seen one where they put Shrek in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, can you look up the the memes? Yeah, let's see. Garfield. <laughs> oh, so my favorite one is when they have Henry Cavill. In the <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, I see the Garfield. Oh, and Godzilla. Oh, there you go. George I've Godzilla. seen people put like older suits on them too. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, like they'll throw suit. on like uh, the Man of Steel suit, or they'll throw him in the original Christopher Re Christopher Reeve suit. Mm -hmm. I wonder how funny this movie's gonna be, knowing that James Gunn. Yeah, I hope like not. I don't want too much comedy relief, but some would be nice. Uh, click. Can you click the one that's like, uh, what like? You see where it says hilarious Superman memes? It's on the left of that. On the right side. Down. <laughs> on, it Down. says one more over. It has Garfield in it. One more. No. Other side. 
Did we lose it? One more over on the right. There we go. Yeah, all these. <laughs> oh. He's putting on pantyhose, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, you got fucking Simpsons, the Titanic. Don't be ashamed. It happens to the best of us. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how funny this movie is going to be because I won't lie. Um, The only James Gunn movie I'm really a fan of is the first Guardians of the Galaxy. I like that one a lot, too. I like that's easily my favorite one he's done. And then the, I like the second one. I just felt like I got undercut a lot with so many jokes. I don't think it was as it. Here's the thing. When I saw it in theaters for the first time, I was insanely disappointed. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I loved it. I liked it, but I was just like, there's too many jokes, dude. Why the fuck is Pac-Man in this movie? Oh, my. <laughs> I oh, forgot about Pac-Man. There's too many jokes. And then, like, there was just callback after callback after callback. I'm like, okay. The one thing that I think is going to make or break the movie is that he said they're including Crypto, the super dog. Um, and I feel like that, oh could God. Get, that could be really bad or really good and not really in between. What if they just make it just like a dog? It's just his dog. That's kind of what it's supposed to be. They can communicate telepathically I hope is how it's shit. supposed to work. But I hope they don't do that shit. I don't know what they're going to do. Just because it's in the comics doesn't, doesn't make need, it good. It doesn't need to go in the movie. Yeah, the biggest one I remember. You have to put Crypto in from the beginning. Oh, I remember... Being in high school, my senior year, when that first Venom movie dropped. That shit was so bad. Yeah. Well, I remember there was a guy. Or actually, no, the trailer was out at the time. Um, I had a guy in a class who loved the trailer and everything. And I'm like, it looks like shit. Like, this is going to be a dog shit movie. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like quoting the comic books and everything. And I go, it's a dumb line. It was dumb in the comic books, and now it's dumb in the trailer. And then I watched the movie, and I go, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. Yeah. It was terrible. Like, And then they made a second one. I was excited when I saw the trailer originally, and then it just kept going down and down mm -hmm. and downhill. And I was mm -hmm. like, holy shit, this is getting so bad. Mm -hmm. I liked the CGI, and then Venom just looks like this giant naked character and doesn't have mm -hmm. the spider on him and anything. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but like, um, but like back to James Gunn. I remember, uh, did you see the Suicide Squad? I like the Suicide Squad. You like Squad. that one? Yeah. I think it's okay. Um, I still think there's like a lot of dumb jokes, jokes like in the there. Weasel. Yeah, <laughs> I like yeah. the Weasel, but yeah, why was he there? <laughs> yeah, there's there's just a lot of dumb there's just a lot of dumb jokes and I think it's honestly like the best looking DC movie that's been made. Like aesthetically, like it looks really good. Did you watch Peacemaker? I did not, but I heard it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. I know that the uh like the Justice League's in Peacemaker at some point. Partially. Yeah, they are. They yeah. have Jason Momoa and then they have the guy who plays the Flash. Mm -hmm. Which what's going on with the guy who played Flash? I think he's running everywhere right now. Yeah. Running away. You see the video of him beating up a woman in like uh like an IKEA or something? Dude, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with that guy. <laughs> I feel like I feel bad yeah. for him, but at the same time I'm just like, what the fuck are you on? I don't know, dude. That might be a that might be a case of like what happens to you when you're like someone gets crushed by the pressure of Hollywood. I guess so. You know, like you just have your mental breakdown and beat the shit out of somebody. You he know, did so much shit too. He was doing horrible things. He was on the run, wasn't he? Yeah, he was on the run for a while, and then he got pardoned. I don't know if he got he... pardoned, but like, he didn't get in trouble. Yeah, just in time for like the Flash premiere. Yeah. Like I know he was still able to go to that. Ezra Miller, that's his name. Yeah. Ezra well, Miller. look up. Where's Ezra Miller now? Right now he's in rehab, I believe. Good. Because they <laughs> that's what they said after the Flash premiere. He was in rehab for a little bit and did that, and then now he's taking uh, some time off. Yeah. <laughs> and now an entourage with a Hebrew rapper. What? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was a, that was another thing, too. What did you think? Because um, I haven't seen the movie, but what did you think of the Flash VFX? <laughs> It's kind of funny, honestly. Like, the movie itself, like, the story, mm -hmm. it's not a bad story. Right. But right. the fucking movie, like, sucked, dude. It did? Like, okay, I like the movie, but I hate the VFX because the mm -hmm. final battle is just in this generic-ass fucking desert. And I'm like, am I watching Dragon Ball? Why the fuck mm -hmm. are we in a desert right now? Like, yeah. can we pick a more interesting location than just yeah. sand? 
Yeah, I think that's um, and that's something I've realized a lot lately is when it comes to action movies or any sort of action in the general. Desert, always. But dude, I think it's also like I think what makes it good. It's not the action; it's the setting it's taking place in. Like I watched a breakdown where someone someone was breaking down parts of the Caribbean, and they were talking about the third film. And like the reason why the third film was so awesome, and why the final battle is so awesome, is because not only is it this pirate battle on these two boats, but it's in a maelstrom, yeah. and they're like sink, slowly sinking into the maelstrom, and it adds like a completely different sort of atmosphere around the characters for them to navigate through. Because, again, like, the boats are, like, now tipping towards each other. Again, yeah, one's I going know, in the water. I falls crash into Yeah, water. they do. It's insane. It's insane. Dude, um, the babies. Oh, oh I also did hear about the babies. God. Yeah. I, it's just his face, dude. Like, they CGI'd his face so many times, and it just looks horrible. Yeah, what's that? The baby in the microwave, too, was kind of really funny. Yeah, what's... Uh, I'll tell you what, the scene with him in Justice League where the truck mm -hmm. and then the girl is like flying in the air and everything stops, I, that's one of my favorite scenes in that it's movie. It's a good scene. It's such a good scene. Like people rip on Zack Snyder for his choice of music sometimes and how some I've heard some people say his, his music choice is out of place. I thought it was so good in that scene. And then the part where he gets the hot dog and he sticks it in his pocket, so funny. Dude. It was good. Speaking of like his music and stuff that he uses mm -hmm. in his films, Man of Steel is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. I listen to that shit all the time. Are you talking about um like like Hans Zimmer's name. Hans Zimmer's? That is so that soundtrack. I like whenever I'm thinking of an idea for a film, and I'm thinking of an action sequence. I put on that soundtrack. Is it the drum one? The drum one. Well, so there there's the one called labeled terraforming. Yeah. Which you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then there's the one labeled flight. You yeah. know that one. And then there's the Hans Zimmer original sketchbook from that one, which is like a 30 minute long piece mm -hmm. of literally a little bit of everything. I listen to those soundtracks um whenever I'm thinking of an action sequence. I see I listen to a lot of soundtracks just in general to try to get ideas. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm trying to think of something a little more relaxed, I'll look up like mm -hmm. like a more somber thing on like mm -hmm. YouTube or something. But like I've been like my Spotify made a cinematic orchestra playlist. Oh wow. So like for you? Yeah. So okay. it's like all the ones that I listen to. So like yeah. I listen to the Oppenheimer one, uh the older Spider Man movies. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, uh Spider Man three has some amazing themes that no one ever talks about. Like Sandman's theme. Oh, it's great. It's so good. That and whole like, scene when he's like I, first getting, you know, yeah, figuring out he's a Sandman. All the violins. Great. I'm like, dude, this is like one of the best scenes I have ever seen. The black suit Spider-Man like is my ringtone for whenever my brother calls me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Dude, it's... um. Speaking of Spider Man, like the original Spider Man, mm -hmm. my favorite movie of all time. That's the whole reason I'm even interested in film. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the first Tobey Maguire. Yeah, like I literally burned the image of that movie on my mom's TV as a kid. I went through <laughs> countless DVDs, VHSs. Yeah, and like I remember, I saw the producers, and I thought the producers were the ones who like made the movie as mm -hmm. a kid. And I was like, I want to be a producer when I grow up. I want to make a Spider Man movie. Mm -hmm. And then I grew up, and I was like be a marine biologist <laughs> yeah that's what you wanted to be yeah, you want to be a marine biologist and all well, marine biologists i don't want to be a chef do you like george costanza you know what that is no <laughs> look up george costanza marine biologist you ever see seinfeld i did see seinfeld yeah <laughs> is he the, oh he's the fucking boss guy. <laughs> yeah dude look uh let's watch the whale story or no go down the sea was angry that day my friends you ever seen this clip no He's pretending to be a marine biologist to impress a woman and they're walking along a beach and there's a beached whale and some guy goes, is anyone a marine biologist? And the woman looks at George and he goes, it's okay, George, go. Dude. And so in order to impress the woman, he walks out to the whale and this is the story. Did I send you the clip where um, Jerry said that the, connecting it back to Kramer was improvised that day on the set? I don't think so. Which is crazy. Yeah, very crazy. Which is crazy. <laughs> it was a golf ball that Kramer was shooting into the ocean. Anyway, you said marine biologist. And yeah, I like, <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to study sharks and shit. I was yeah. like, dude, they're so cool. Like, mm -hmm. their skin is literally made of teeth. Yeah. Um, 
And then I took the film class uh, that Ethan was in too, uh, in high school. And that's. Would oh, you guys go to high school together? Not at the same high school. I mm. went from my school to his school for like a class for like two hours. Oh, and this was the film class. Yeah. Uh, and then we were in that for a little while and like that really made me get into it more. And then like, especially VFX, dude, mm -hmm. I love making something that doesn't exist and then just creating it mm -hmm. like that. It's the coolest fucking thing ever to me. Right. Like, and like I hyper analyze shit now sometimes when I watch movies, if it's really good, I don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. But like, um, like in Spider-Man one, I've seen it so many times that mm -hmm. I just know certain points. Like when Mary Jane is swinging with him, it's a fucking mannequin. Right. Do you ever notice that? <laughs> I did not. You didn't notice that? No. Look up the Mary, it's a. Uh... Is it Mary Jane mannequin? No, Spider-Man's Yeah, Spider-Man's a mannequin. So like, uh, yeah, that scene where he saves her, that's a fucking mannequin, dude. Oh, yeah. I guess I could tell. Like when he's <laughs> swinging away and she's just smiling and shit. Yeah, that yeah, part. Yeah, I know. That's I know. A fucking mannequin, because like he's so like st he's just like this. <laughs> he's just like s super stiff. Oh. And she's just over here moving and smiling, and like oh. his skin doesn't move in the suit or anything. He's just right. swinging. I'm like Jesus Christ, dude. That's so funny. But it's so funny how like like that movie still beats. It's so good. A lot of what comes out today. You know that, what I mean? That final fight scene in Spider Man One is the most brutal fight scene that Marvel has ever made. I still think well, I will say this. I will say this. Spider Man Two is my favorite of those ones. I think one is my favorite, yeah. and then two, and then three. Spider Man Two is so good because like mm -hmm. you can't compare their shitty CGI in No Way Home to Spider Man Two that was made in two thousand four. Right, and was being edited during like two thousand three. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you fuck that up, <laughs> dude? When I was growing up, um, so like Spider Man Two was always my my favorite, mm -hmm. and so. I, like I love physical media and growing up, you know, I'd get the DVDs. And so I remember I only had Spider-Man one and two. Yeah. Cause at the time three didn't come out yet. And so I had like the box set or whatever of the two movies and somehow Spider-Man two got scratched. So I could only watch Spider-Man two up until a point before the whole movie would just start essentially breaking mm -hmm. and skipping and stuttering. So I'd be pissed because I was like, if I want to watch Spider-Man, I got to watch fucking Spider-Man 1. And I watched it a hundred million times. And I can only watch like the first five minutes of Spider-Man 2. And I like I wasn't able to watch watch Spider-Man 2 until they came out with a, a, a 4K box set with... I have it, yeah. The three and then the three, it's the Steelbooks. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the three uh, Sam Raimi's and then the two with Andrew Garfield. Um, that was the first time I was actually able to sit down and watch Spider-Man 2. It was that. You know, I uh, do you know movies anywhere? Like it comes with all the... Oh, yeah, I have yeah. it. Yeah. I have all. I have the whole trilogy. I have the editor's cut of Spider-Man 3. And There's I, an editor's cut? Yeah. Is um, it better? Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have the extended edition of Spider-Man 2. There's an extended edition of Spider-Man? Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? What the you, fuck? You've probably seen the extended one. Usually, the home releases are the extended one for Spider-Man Two. No, it was. They didn't release it for a while. Oh, really? Because uh, I've only seen the extended. Yeah, the train scene is extended. Um, what else is extended? There's some extra scenes that they threw in the movie, like mm -hmm. uh, when he was delivering his pizzas and he was in the broom closet and he takes for oh and yeah fucking broom yeah. yeah that's in the extended edition this is so funny my younger brother has never seen spider those spider-man movies at least in full to my knowledge yeah he'll still come up to me all the time and go pizza time <laughs> <laughs> like ran like randomly it'll it'll be randomly i'll be like jack what are you doing he goes pizza time <laughs> and then he walks away so back to the deadpool oh. trailer i don't know if you guys noticed but when there's a scene where they're in wolverine and deadpool are in a diner and you can see in the reflection of the window that it's joe's and people think that it's going to be like pizza joe from spider-man Spider -Man 2 Damn, cool dude in the extended edition when Peter shows up to work and he says, I'm sorry, I'm late. He's just like, look, man, I need you to be here five minutes ago. Our other guy got deported last night and I need you to be here. And I was like, how the fuck did this make it in the movie? Yeah. It was so fucking funny. But yeah, no, those movies are legitimately what got me into like filmmaking. Mm -hmm. 
And then like, I, I'm still scrolling through Letterbox, going through the years and like category wise, so I can go down and mark all the movies that I've seen. There's just mm-hmm. too fucking many, dude. Right. There's too many. <laughs> so, so, so you and Ethan like rendezvous in this class mm-hmm. in in high school. What year was this in high school? Shit, dude. Uh, this is our junior and senior year. Okay. But we didn't talk until like our senior year. Right. And so then, did you did you guys like decide together like let's go to MPI? Yeah, our senior year we we're like. Hey, uh, I'm probably gonna go to MPI. He's like, I'm going to MPI too, and we decided to carpool. So we would be carpooling back and mm-hmm. forth to MPI. And then, like first like three months, my car like broke down. Right. So he had to drive. I felt so bad. And then I got my car fixed, and I was driving back and forth. Did you graduate in 2020 or 19? Yeah, 2020. 2020. So you got the shit year. Yeah, I was not, dude. Shit year. That shit was so. Nice, I I dude. bet. I bet. I watched. Um, I watched my brother do virtual classes and everything i didn't have to do that so i'm watching him and i'm just imagining what it's like being a senior that year probably the best they told me they were just like okay you're passing you graduate i graduated in march dude so you were just done yeah you were just just done i was just living my life i was like okay yeah it's so that whole thing is so weird i mean especially from like uh because i had to go i was an mpi during all that and so was lucas it was so it was so weird because it was kind of the same thing, you know. It was kind of like being back in like how I'd imagine being a senior in high school was because I remember there was a day where, I mean, I felt bad for the teacher because you could tell like they probably had something planned in person, mm-hmm. and then it got reduced to a Zoom call. And I remember there was a class. It was whatever, not construction, art direction or something, and the teacher. No joke, spent two hours showing us how to make a traffic cone in like Blender or something. And so I remember like the lesson starts. I hear, okay, we're going to do this in Blender. I'm like, I don't fucking use Blender. I don't know what Blender is. So I just left my icon on the screen. I went downstairs, made like dinner, a steak, and all this shit. I come back up. It goes, all right, now we're going to color it orange. And I go, oh my gosh. So then I just started playing video games with my friends. And then that was literally like a huge chunk of time at virtual MPI. Dude, it was just that. I hated the Zoom calls so much. Some of you guys calls, still got the Zoom calls? Yeah, we were. We did like two days online and two days in person. Mm, kind of sucked. The whole year? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And then like near the end of the year, though, they made us go in person a lot more. Like we had to go to an in-person class for Mark's screenwriting class. Dude, it was so hard to get through. <laughs> like when he was teaching... Yeah. um. Like you've seen Symphony, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Ethan, he was writing a movie for his thesis, but it was gonna be way too long. And then I didn't have the funds to make the one that I wanted to make for myself. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's just do one together. I, while Mark was teaching, mm-hmm. I don't even know what the fuck he was talking about. But like, I wrote that script in like fifteen minutes, and I was yeah. like, well, is this is this fine? <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. we revised it over the next like week, and then yeah. we shot it in like three days. Yeah. No, dude, it's, um, I mean, I'll tell you what, I didn't mind the screenwriting class as much as I think other people did. Cause I, like, I, I, th- he taught me some shit that I didn't yeah. know, but like, I feel like, dude, he, he's like, does Mark ever watch this podcast? I don't know. Mark, <laughs> Mark, I am so curious if you have a crush on Natalie Portman. Cause there was so much Natalie Portman in that class. No, really? I don't yeah. remember that. Luke, do you remember Natalie Portman? He kept <laughs> showing Natalie yeah. Portman class in class. And I was just like, I get it. I don't blame you him. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. But like, yeah. I, I want to learn more about like in-depth screenwriting, please. <laughs> right. No, I, I got you. Yeah. It was, um, it was funny. I think, um, have you seen amendment? Yeah. I've seen amendment. Yeah, I think I think he said that he didn't understand the script like whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, like he's when not, it came to that. He's not a bad guy. It was like, funny. He, he liked uh from yeah. the thesis script, the original one that I made, he liked that one a lot. Right. Uh but I was like, yeah, I don't I can't make it though. And then um speaking of amendment, your amendment poster is actually in my non dialogue film. <laughs> Yeah, I, Keanu, I do remember that. Keanu yeah, sent me the, that. The Raimi little twist thing that I did. Yeah, I think it was, I think Keanu reached out to me. He says, hey, you know, I'm, I'm helping somebody with the film. Was he helping you with the film? Was I he think, on yeah, that set? He was helping me, yeah. Yeah, because he goes like, you know, Logan wants to know whether or not he can have it in the background or something like that. And I said, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, it'd be <laughs> hilarious, you know. Yeah, dude. Um, so, so then you wrap up, wrap up MPI 
at what point were you wrestling with whether or not you wanted to do VFX? Oh, dude, I wanted to do VFX straight out of high school, but like mm -hmm. I didn't have the computer to do it. So like when mm -hmm. I got my MacBook, that's when I really started making a lot of shit. Like I made that earth thing for Doug mm -hmm. in like an hour or two hours. And I was like, is this fine? And he was like, yeah, that looks great. And then he told me that they weren't going to use it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, I've, I've been wanting to do it for a long, long time. And now that I finally have the computer to do it mm -hmm. and I've been using Unreal Engine, dude, I'm right. having the time of my fucking life. Right. It is so much fun. I mm -hmm. love it so much. Like when I was in Atlanta, uh, I was using my little MacBook and doing Blender, but like I couldn't mm -hmm. render anything. So I wasn't right. really having a good time with it. Right. So do you think that, and maybe, maybe it's, I don't, I don't know if it's niche, hmm. but then again, like I feel like writing is also somewhat niche. Like I don't think a lot of kids go into film school wanting to learn how to write, if I'm being honest. Like I knew how to write beforehand, but like he taught me how to like properly right. set everything. I love writing. I write a lot. What I was going to say was I wonder if it'd be advantageous for them to implement like a, a VFX class. Yeah, I totally think some way. Should, especially since virtual production is getting to a point to where it's going to be more mainstreamed. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that they definitely need to talk about. Like I'm not saying that they need to get a whole LED volume. That's right. expensive. But right. Like, I like they there's a way that they can teach them indie virtual production things like that. Yeah, I think I think there was a day in, in, either I missed it or I wasn't paying attention in class where the closest they did to any sort of VFX work was they did a um they did like miniature shots. Yeah. They had a day where they worked with miniatures. And like I said I either wasn't paying attention, which I think I would have paid attention. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, they had a day where they did miniature shots, and because um, I remember, I think I think they recreated like a, the scene from Lord of the Rings where it's the the two yeah, statues. Yeah, like that? I remember yeah. that. They did that with us too. Yeah, and so, um, but that's like the closest they get to any sort of VFX work because because like here's the thing, like we approach movies now, especially on like projects we're working on. It's like okay, well, how do we do this? You know, and there are so many movies nowadays that implement visual effects in some way, shape or form, even if it's something like green screen. Now mm -hmm. I feel like they touched on green screen slightly yeah, in they school. They don't go into it that much. They explain some stuff, but like... yeah, they explain it, but they don't really say like, Hey, let's go out and film it and then show you how to actually Josh yeah, did implement do it one day, but it was also like back when the COVID stuff was happening and literally only like four people would come in. So I remember it was like mm. me probably Jared Quentin and my brother and that was it. And right. we just did like a little demo, but yeah, he did teach us some kind of Da Vinci stuff, but like I was more into like the Adobe side of things. That's my mm -hmm. preferred platform. But yeah, no, I feel like if we make this new movie with what you're doing and we do it good, I have a strong feeling I'm probably going to get a, me and J me and Matt are going to get a call from Doug being like, you guys want to teach a class? Yeah. What are you going to say? I'll probably be like, Depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how much you're going to pay me. Pay me, you know, pay me. And like, what do you want me to teach them? Like, if it's something that I don't really know, because like, I'm going to be honest, while we're filming this thing, I we're going to all be learning. As yeah. We so yeah. We're going to be like toddlers trying like, you know how in Kingdom of the Planet of the when he was trying mm -hmm. to fix that electric stick? Yeah. That's going to be us. No, probably. Probably. Yeah. I mean, well, I'll tell you what, every time. I've worked with VFX in some way, shape, or form. It's always been a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So, um, have you seen Posterity? I have not. Um, so that's one where there's like a few, some shots in space, and um, there's a particular section of the film where you're with a spaceman in a cockpit, but then before that, you actually see his ship. Um, one of the engines is blown, so it's like drifting in space and spinning, mm -hmm. and you can see the sun in the back. So then, when you get to the cockpit shots, it looks really cool because the sun's Looks like it's spinning around. Oh yeah, that's sick. So like the everything inside the cockpit is all practical. Like the sun is literally our gaffer Scott running around the ship in my garage holding a light. And it's... But then we have um the shot of the spaceship where it's drifting in space. So we had a miniature built, and what we did was we rigged um these little hooks on the bottom of it and had a wire going up. 
Because what we were going to do in post was we were going to flip the image. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were hanging it upside down, literally from a painter's pole, and we would spin it, and then we film it in slow motion. And we would have, you know, a light off a little bit further away from the camera. That would be the sun. Mm -hmm. And then we would do the whole camera motion, yada, yada, yada. It took us like 20 tries because it was that difficult because, you know, maybe whoever's holding the painter's pole, like their arm like jolts for a second and then the thing sways or maybe the camera movement's off. So that's when I first worked with VFX with Jarjosa. Um, and he was already working on VFX shots for that movie anyway. There's a scene where um, in the context of the film, it opens up with um, these characters watching these missiles get launched. There's an attack on the United States. And so um, the United States, you know, fires missiles back at whoever this unidentified enemy is yeah. in the realm of the film. So you don't see in the beginning of the film, but at the end, it, you kind of get the payoff shot where you see what the characters were seeing and you see the missiles rise up in the horizon. And I was very comfortable with having that shot have visual effects on it, um, especially CG effects. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, they're far away. They're nothing close up, hyper detailed. You know, I feel like we can really pull it off and, and he really did. And this is like, what we're doing now is going to be your first time working with like a full... 3d environment yeah it's it's gonna be crazy dude it's it's literally it's it's everything we've done on steroids because then we have this miniature shot that we film in my garage of the spaceship and i go all right Jar so can you like spruce this up you know like can you do anything to help it because it's just not working out what he did was in blender he just he, he's pretty much used that shot we gave as like a template mm -hmm. and he just recreated the whole thing himself in blender yeah. And so, my, well, what's funny is so, like, my guy who made the miniature, he goes, That miniature shot turned out really good. You're like, <laughs> I said, I said, That's a, uh, oh, yeah, we could pull it up. I said, That's a, um, yeah, that's, a, that's all computer generated. You know what's funny is, like, when I was, like, thinking of making a test shot for you, I was actually going to steal your logo from Facebook and I was going <laughs> to make a motion graphic out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah. Like, I was going to make, uh, him in the in the little rocket ship like spin around in a circle and then yeah. land right there and then while it was spinning around it would be your uh, <laughs> thing popping out. Yeah, this is everything Jarjosa did in Blender. I oh, looks sick. Yeah. I like that it's just black space too. Yeah. It's more realistic. It looks awesome. Well, because then you get to this shot. Like this is one of my favorite shots we've ever done. And the, the cockpit looked like dog shit. Like you walked in my garage and it looked like it was about to fall apart. And I said, Filming that was a nightmare too for that actor. Because it was super hot. Yeah, it's like August. Was it, yeah, August. Yeah, did you guys make all the suits and shit yourselves? Like, is I'm a costume guy. Yeah, oh, costume guy. Is it like foam? Yeah, the helmet's back there oh, okay. on the shelf, yeah. You want me to grab it? No, do not grab it. <laughs> it's in the case. Oh, it's in the case. It might fall apart. It, it might fall apart, literally. That's why it's in the case. It's because it's like slightly falling apart. Um, um, but you know, I, I a hundred percent, like, I like Matt a lot because like when someone is actually passionate mm -hmm. about VFX and stuff, mm -hmm. they're really fucking good at it. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I was able to accelerate a lot faster than I feel like than most would because I have such like a diehard interest mm -hmm. for it. And so right. is Matt. That's why like one day I texted Matt and I was like, Hey Matt, do you want to start like a Michigan VFX company? I think you guys should. I was like, cause like my end goal, I would love to work for Weta. Mm -hmm. like the guys that worked on right. Avatar, Avatar. Planet of the Apes. Yep. But like in the meantime, I feel like having our own thing here because there isn't one would go mm -hmm. a long way. And it's yeah, a lot of people are looking for it too. Yeah. No, I think you guys can really tap into a market and sort of capitalize on that. Yeah. You know, because like you said, it's not really here. Um, I mean, case in point, we're trying to essentially create that team right now. Yeah. In order to be able to do what, what it is we want to do. Um. I'm very curious to see how it's going to pan out because, like you said, it's going to be a learning process the whole way through. Like, imagine yeah. that makes it a lot it's big enough to where, like, if the film industry ever comes back to Michigan, mm -hmm. hopefully, um, we would hopefully get it to a good standing point to where we would own, like, our own studio mm -hmm. and we could have our own volume and people would mm -hmm. rent that out. Yeah. No, if, um, I'll, I'll tell you what, with the project we're working on right now, um, if we're able to, if we're able to pull it off, like it's it, going to be pretty big if we pull it off, like an hour long movie made almost entirely 
in Unreal Engine, people like if hour long multiply that by like three three hour long movies. Yeah, it's so, it's gonna be a long motherfucker. Like if we put that like I have an Unreal Engine Facebook group that I'm in, and that's where I put mm-hmm. that tank scene in. Right, and it got a lot of likes mm-hmm. out of nowhere, and I was like, wow, this is surprising. And a mm-hmm. lot of the comments were really like nice. Yeah. Um, but well, I found you from Facebook when I saw your the it was the sword. And then you can see, like, I think it was the castle in the background. Yeah, the fire. Castle. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's where I saw it. And then I I messaged like, Keanu. Like, hey, do you know this guy? <laughs> you, no, seriously. That's why I did. I said, is this, I said, is he legit? Like, is he doing VFX? Is this what he wants to do? Like, I, the crazy environments and all this shit. And he goes, yeah, yeah. You want me to talk to him? And so then he talked to you. And then we started talking and everything. He took me to see fucking Die Hard. <laughs> Wait, he took you to see Die Hard? <laughs> no, he didn't take. I oh. didn't Die Hard. <laughs> okay. He hasn't seen Die Hard. Yeah. He's like, you want to go see a movie tonight? Because like I was trying to hang out with him for a while. Right. And we went to go see Die Hard. And then after the movie, he was like, so I, I brought you here to talk to you about an opportunity. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah? yeah, that's so freaking funny. That is hilarious. I didn't know that whatsoever. He just yeah. told me he talked to you. It was so funny. It was he never saw Die Hard, and I was just like quoting the whole movie as we were watching it. Yeah, I, I I went over to him and I was just like, "See you later, motherfucker." <laughs> just like, <laughs> when does he say that? I'm like, right now. <laughs> oh my god, no, dude. It's um, I'm super excited to see what you guys are gonna be able to do, um, and I think that, I think that if you guys definitely tap into some sort of VFX niche here in michigan i think you guys would be successful i mean case in point you know you were working on vfx for doug's film and you know i mean it's needed you know i just don't there's just not a go-to place for it right now that wasn't even a thing like he was just talking about it in the hallway and i was like hey doug can i try yeah (laughs) right right like you want to give it a crack i was like can i try and i i tried it and it was okay it wasn't perfect but like I would love to build a space scene in Unreal, and there is uh, a pack where it comes with a bunch of like sky boxes, which mm-hmm. is what would make the space. And then you can make asteroid belts and all this other shit. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. But it's like three hundred dollars. <laughs> right? No, yeah, I bet it's expensive as fuck. But there's a lot that you show me where you tell me it's free, and I go, "Oh wow, yeah, that's pretty." Like, a lot crazy. of the stuff I've made is free. Like the tank thing, the only thing I paid for was the tank, and it was ten dollars. Oh really? Yeah. Why do they? Why do they allow? Like, why? Why is it just free? Like, why do they allow a lot of this stuff just to? I just think it's because Epic is making so much money mm-hmm. that they want to give back to people. Mm. I would think, like, obviously, bigger companies like game development companies are going to have to pay for it now. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's an insanely powerful thing to use. It's kind of like the reason why Blender exists. Mm. It was made so people who couldn't afford something would be able to make whatever they wanted. Right. And like Blender's at a point now where it's almost able to compete with like Maya and Mm -hmm. uh, things like that, like Cinema 4D, Mm -hmm. which I think Blender's UI in general looks way better than those because I think those look fucking dated as hell. Right. What do you think is going to happen with AI coming on the rise? I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think it's mainly going to be used to help out because I feel like a lot of there's going to be people that will make a short film with AI mm-hmm. and it'll get really popular on like TikTok and stuff. And people will be like, this is insane. That doesn't mean it's going to be good. Right. Like when I was making uh, like on that Facebook page, there's a lot of renders that are really good and there's a lot of really shitty ones. Right. And I'm just like, there's a, there's a, an in between that you need to know about VFX and the reason why I think I excel at it so much I feel like I said that wrong. You said succeed. I said succeed. <laughs> <laughs> succeed so much at it. It was because there you go. Uh, I had the, uh, I meant to say Excel, not Succel. But, um, <laughs> That's a sound bite. <laughs> because you were just thinking of success and Excel at the same time. You just yeah. You find it. Yeah. I don't know. New words. They get made every day. But, there you um, go. Yeah, no. What you need to know is like, you need to know first how to make a movie mm-hmm. and then you can go into VFX, I feel like. Because mm-hmm. I feel like once you know those two things, you can actually make whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You can make it look really good. I feel like if you're just working on VFX stuff, it's good, it's cool, it's really needed. But if you're like an indie person that's trying to show off your work and stuff, just showing like this weird camera movement scene, it's not going to catch any eyes. 
Mm -hmm. You need that experience of like, okay, if I'm going to light this, how is it going to be lit? What's the shot going to look like? Mm -hmm. Where do I position it? You have to know these things in order, I feel like, to make it look really good, which it's not that hard to do. Like YouTube literally has so much learning potential. on mm -hmm. it. Right. Like I was in a discord call with a bunch of VFX artists the other day. Mm -hmm. It's like a YouTube one. And he was like, how do I do this? How do I do this? Like I'm burning to unreal and I want to make a video game. And I'm like, I looked up this YouTuber that I watch and I was like, go to his channel. And he has a whole course on how to make a video game. Oh, really? Yeah. You should talk to, um, we have a guy who he works here, but he's also worked on a lot of my films. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's in the next war. He's one of the goofier characters, Ben Kowalski. Um, he's trying to make a, he's trying to make a game. A game, yeah. But, uh, like, he has to explain it. Like, I can't, I can't do it justice the way he does. And, like, I don't get to talk a lot to, like, a lot of, like, more film people. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like, I love being able to talk to people and spreading creativity and stuff because it actually makes me more inspired to make stuff. Like, I have right. so many ideas that I want to make, but, like, I don't know where I would start. Like there's this one that I want to make. Yeah. It's, it's like a, not a zombie movie, but I like horror a lot. Yeah. But what I like about horror is taking these older concepts and making them scary again. Mm -hmm. So like zombies, for example, I feel like they're more of a joke now. I yeah. I wanted to make a movie that would make you piss your pants if mm -hmm. this thing was real. Yeah. I feel like zombies nowadays are like props. Yeah. You know, I think the closest I got lately to sort of being on edge with any sort of zombie was The Last of Us. Yeah, show, I which, love The Last of Us. Dude. Like, dude, the first, I mean, the first episode out the gate, you know, because I'm you play the video games, obviously. Yeah. So I remember um, I did not play the video game when it first came out. I remember hearing about it and how awesome it was. I had friends at school. I think around the same time, maybe GTA Five was out. Yeah, so, 2013. Yeah, so it was like that time frame. Those are the two things I would always hear about was GTA and The Last of Us. And then they came out uh, with PS4 and they did a, a version. Yeah, a remaster for the PS4. And a friend of mine who had been bugging me to play that game forever got got it for me. Like he got it like a deal at GameStop or whatever mm -hmm. for dirt cheap. He bought it for me. Um, for my birthday and uh, I played it and just the first chapter alone and there's not a whole lot of like I mean there is action towards the end of that first chapter when obviously you're escaping and mm -hmm. um, you're just like holy shit <laughs> yeah and I can't remember if you're playing from I think you're playing from the perspective of the daughter yeah you start as the daughter yeah and then you get in the car crash and then you're playing as Joel right yeah 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 yeah. because because a lot of it is just learning the mechanics of how to move and how to do this but then you get to the show just the opening of the show where they're on the talk show mm -hmm. that scene is so so good. good and it's it's scary when it when like when he drops the bomb and he goes like, yeah, yeah, but what if this thing were to like mutate? What if the world were to get warmer? Yeah. And then the camera angle slightly changed. Now we're closer. And then like when he starts talking about it controlling us, it sh it shoots over to the crowd, and they're all standing like perfectly. It's like we're gonna we're gonna take a break. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was so good. And then what I thought this is the one thing I thought would have been cool because like I thought that's where they were going mm -hmm. with episode two was it showed you a, the, a different perspective of the beginning of the virus with that old woman in her apartment and they're talking to, and I think she was a doctor and she was trying to figure out like, okay. Oh, yeah, and she's like, bomb. Yeah. Like, oh, exactly. You have everything. to bomb this whole fucking thing. And I'm like, oh, shit. If they're going to start every single episode with like a different perspective. I'm of so when... sad when they stopped doing it, dude. I that know. Was, like, that was so good. I hope they make like a mm -hmm. prequel. Not like a prequel, but like a apparently what the director said in the podcast i don't know if you listened to the podcast mm -hmm. for it um he was saying you know like the the window shot on the main menu of the game yeah he yeah. said they had a window shot for like every like every single place that they went there was a window shot for it mm -hmm. but they didn't use them all and then they also had like a thing to show what happened all across the world, but they cut it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why the fuck would you cut it, dude? That's right. So cool. That's so cool. I mean, especially when you're like on a streaming service where you don't have to worry about commercials. You don't have to worry about any of the shit that goes with conventional television. You can honestly just make whatever you want, however long you want. Mm -hmm. um, my one disappointment with that show was the last episode because yeah, it was too short. 
dude, the game, I, that level was, I, I remember when I first started, I played this game in 2017. That was the first time I played it. And um, because I'm a Destiny player, me and my friends play Destiny. And so I remember Destiny 2 was like right around the corner. And they did a like a beta, like they dropped like a beta for you to play Destiny 2 around the same time I was finishing The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. I was so invested in The Last of Us. All my friends were like, dude, hop on Destiny 2. It's freaking insane. I'm like, guys, I can't. Like, I'm playing. I have to beat this game. I'm like, this is the most insane final this is the most insane finale to a game I've ever played in my life. And it was tense. It was scary. I, I can't remember there being a single zombie in that port. It was just humans. It was just people. Dude. And it was the most intense final battle of like any game I've ever played. And on top of it with, with the story and the twist, I was like, oh my God. And then in the the show, it's kind of just cut down to a montage. And I go, I oh it. my so god, dude! Because like, there's so much that happens in that. Yeah, there is part. Uh huh. And I feel like he just kept running, firing, and then they cut firing. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you guys just kind of ruined it a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I still liked it a lot. Like, I yeah. have I have this series on Blu-ray because I was like, there's no way in fucking hell I'm ever letting this get taken away from me. Right. Yeah. The streaming service ever yeah. puts it away. And like. I don't know. I feel like when it comes to zombies, especially like mm-hmm. the film that I want to make is just the start of the apocalypse, like patient zero. Mm-hmm. And that's where you should be making. I feel like the zombie, the scariest thing in your movie, it should be the one thing that should instill fear in the person. And you can't just do jump scares. You have to do it psychologically because if you're not doing it psychologically, mm-hmm. then you're not really doing a good job at making a horror movie. Right. Right. And then if you're doing post-apocalyptic where it's mm-hmm. been years in the future, zombies, they can still be scary. They can still be a little fearful. But the part that should be scary, your main antagonist that should be terrifying, isn't zombies. It should be people. Because mm-hmm. after everything goes to shit, there's no order, there's no law, the most terrifying thing you're going to come across is a person. Right. Yeah. Like... like Especially like even in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yep. She met one other person that could talk and she mm-hmm. killed him. Oh yeah, that's true. She fucking strangled him on that bridge. Yeah. You know? Have you um have you seen Civil War, the A twenty four movie? Yeah. I fucking love that movie. You love that movie? I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was the greatest thing ever. Me and Ethan almost got jobs on that movie. Oh, I know Connor McBain worked on it. Yeah. You me, know and that? Him, me and him almost got to be PAs on it because yeah. of uh, you know, Amber Harley. That sounds familiar. She's a script soup. Yeah. She worked on a bunch of movies. Yeah. She worked on that movie. And she was like, This it's kind like the set is kind of a nightmare, but I could possibly get you guys on. And I was like, Yeah, totally do it. Cause she told me one of the PAs literally put their walkie on the ground and left. Oh, because it was bad? Yeah. It was that bad. Like the set life was that bad. And I was just like, wow. honestly, I don't give a fuck, dude. I want to work with Alex Garland. <laughs> what was going on with the set life? I she didn't really go into it. <laughs> but like I feel like not. I feel like it was just a lot of overtime probably mm. and a lot of setbacks because when we were extras in the class of 09 thing we they were also shooting it while we were there and we had to pause one time because they were using uh blanks in the city like gunfire in the city oh okay and it was loud dude it like, was I know for a the, blank yeah in the movie they um they kept like the gun the gunfire and everything as loud as they could to make it as realistic as possible to make you feel like you're in that and it sounds like it did in real life. It was kind of right, weird. Right. Yeah, the <sighs> Civil War it's a it's a it's weird. It's a mixed bag for me. I mean, it's like it's like a one and done type of movie oh, yeah. for me. They can't do another one. No, I mean like for me watching it. Oh, like watching, like yeah. like it's not a movie where I'm going to go like buy the Blu-ray. Um like it was interesting seeing how you know, it's more like an observational type of movie where it's okay. These people act like this. These people act like that. My biggest thing was just, I wish that they focused more on the battle at the end a yeah. little more. Like it would have been cool. Like clearly the president is like a rat in a trap in the middle of Washington, DC. Dude. I hated that girl that got her. Which killed. one? Oh, you talking about the little girl? Yeah. That see, that didn't make sense to me. I was just like, she just kept taking pictures and pictures. Like I get the adrenaline rush. And then when she covered her, she just didn't tell her to move. She was just like, like, dude, you motherfucker. I didn't see that. That didn't like on a, on a movie that 
I feel was trying to be very realistic in terms of the actual environment and scenario. When it came to that one that character choice. Realistic, yeah. Yeah. You know? But I, I do think, because I don't think that movie was supposed to be about, like, like a lot of people were mad because there wasn't a lot of, like, action and stuff. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. it's a movie about photographers. It's not mm-hmm. a movie about, like, soldiers. Mm-hmm. They're taking pictures. They're trying to... I see think the, the title con- and the marketing is just yeah. a little misleading for they're, some people. They're trying to see the conflict mm-hmm. without engaging in it. They're not trying to engage. Mm-hmm. Right. No, yeah, like the whole in the whole theme of desensitization, you know, the more you're exposed to this horrific bullshit mm-hmm. in warfare, like it makes sense, especially when you look at the point of view of a photographer. You know, like in the beginning of the film, Kirsten Dunst was sort of, wasn't she sort of wrestling with memories she had back in the Middle East? And then obviously, you know, she meets the one girl and the girl's like, I, like it's her first um, time she's in like a firefight and she's freaking out, taking the pictures and whatnot. Um, and then, yeah, but then when you get to the end, I'm like, you're in this narrow corridor Guns are loud, dude. Like I was, uh, I, I took my mom to the gun range this last Saturday, and there was a guy in the stall next to us mm-hmm. with a fucking rifle, and every every shot that went off from that rifle, ears ringing, <laughs> dude. Not only that, but I could like feel the wind from the end of the barrel kick into my stall as I was trying to put up my target. You know, and then send it out. I was like, oh my God. Like it was it was so much. And then it only made me think of Civil War again, of being in that short narrow hallway where now you have like twenty of those guys, ten on each side, firing at each other. I'm like, Kirsten Dunce, I know you're in Spider Man, okay? But let's be realistic here. You're not gonna fucking save a girl and then just stand there while all the shit's going on around you. Like, yeah, like if I think like a normal person would have curled up into a ball. I feel like they on were on the floor. I feel like she was she was in shock that whole time, and I feel like she was just kind of completely zoned out mm. during that. She was like, like they kept pushing in on her face, and she was very much stonewall. Yeah, the entire time. I think she reached her breaking point, and she just snapped. Mm. Like she was at the point to where she wasn't like able to be there mentally. But she was just trying to survive physically. Mm. And then she pushed her out of way to save her life. And then she ended up dying. Yeah. Still that fucking bitch taking know, the pictures. Dude. <laughs> I know, dude. So you, like you you played video games, right? You play Destiny. Do you play Call of Duty? I, I tried playing Call of Duty growing up. I just never, like it never appealed to me. Mm. See, I think the reason why Destiny appealed to me was because it's like space sci-fi. And it's pretty much Call of Duty in space. Mm-hmm. You know? first person and there's this new game coming out that i'm so hyped for it comes out tomorrow what is it x defiant and it's made by ubisoft Mm. but they basically made a free-to-play call of duty Mm. except they put characters in it kind of like black ops 4 and things like that so these characters have special abilities so they got the guys from the division tom clancy's uh splinter cell far cry like Mm. all these different characters and it's kind of just like Call of Duty, and I'm so excited to fucking play it, dude. Yeah. I'm trying to... Um, I might be at the tail end of my video game run because the last expansion for Destiny, Destiny 2 comes out in June. And, I mean, I've, I've been playing the game for 10 years. They'll make another one. They'll probably make another one. Um, but they're amping it up to essentially be the end game of the franchise which the last expansion sucked balls like it mm. like it was so bad um especially because it came off of a really good expansion like arguably the best one that the game's ever had called the witch queen i don't know if, yeah i don't you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about i don't play destiny 2 that much i played destiny when it originally came out mm-hmm. so i, I like the first one and i started the second one and then i it lost me after the second expansion second oh yeah forsaken yeah forsaken yeah i like that one it was okay um, the third one sucked. Um, the Witch Queen, though, was, like, really, really good. Then Lightfall came out, was absolute dog shit. Um, a lot of people think a lot of people think that um, uh, Lightfall and this next expansion were actually one giant expansion. Yeah. And then they just split it into two to give it a little bit of padding because 
the opening cutscene of Lightfall and the final cutscene of Lightfall. Mm-hmm. I mean, in in the time frame of the story, like days are supposed to have passed by between those two cutscenes. But everybody's like, if you literally stitch them together, it's like no time passed at all. And everything we just did was irrelevant. And it's almost like this one cutscene was the beginning of whatever this big finale was. But then they were like, you know what? If we just cut open that cutscene a little bit and shove a bunch of content in between, maybe we can get an expansion out of it. Which I don't know if, again, very similar to like the VFX artists with people being very much spread thin. Oh, yeah, dude. Game development is yeah. fucked right now. That's what I was going to say. Because bigger studios like uh, Microsoft, they keep buying shit and then mm-hmm. they like uh, they take away the studio. They shut it down. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, what was it? There was this game called Hi-Fi Rush that was made and it was really popular. Mm-hmm. Microsoft bought the company and then dismembered. Like, they just... They're destroying the set. They canceled it. <laughs> Dude. And then yeah. immediately the day after that said, we need to make more games. Like, And then they described the Hi-Fi Rush game to like a T. Yeah. They were like, we need to make more games like that. And everyone's like, you literally just, just bombed the studio yeah. that makes those games. Yeah. Do you, do you think it's very similar? Like, uh, it's so similar to the film industry. Yeah. It's in the same boat right now because everyone's getting laid off and everything. It's pretty bad. That's why I'm also trying to learn Unreal Engine because, like, I would like to make a game at some point. Right. I think that'd be really cool. Right. Because I also kind of got inspired to be a VFX artist through video games. Mm -hmm. Like, and making all these 3D scenes and finding out, like, oh, dude, like, first finding out when The Last of Us came out when I was 13 and seeing that... um, these characters were all just mocaps, and I watched behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, that's dude, cool. I want to fucking do that. Like, that's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, I've seen that shit. It was, like, really, really cool. Yeah, I was like, I that is what I want to do with my life right there. <laughs> dude, no, I mean, I'm super excited to see what you guys are going to be able to do with our project that we're working on. Obviously, we're going to be working on it for a really long time and, oh, yeah. and hustling, and <laughs> um, I'm very I'm very excited for you guys to, to read read the thing. Um, cause I think like what you were touching on earlier about, you know, bouncing off of other creatives and getting excited to create stuff. Um, I'm very curious to see how you're going to react in terms of like the environments and everything Mm -hmm. to create. Um, but dude, Logan, what is besides what we're working on right now? What's like sort of your next step and your next goal? Um, there is a film that I want to work on Mm -hmm. and, I need a work. personal one. Yep. yep. I haven't written it yet. I need to write it, but it involves pirates. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, basically the entire thing. I'll give you like a short little synopsis of it. Mm-hmm. This whole thing takes place on the boat, on the pirate boat. Mm-hmm. They have, they collected a huge prize. They're on their way. They have to cut through a storm. And then after this storm, they're kind of stuck in a limbo. Mm-hmm. And like, there's some really cool, creepy VFX stuff that I want to do. So like, right. I want this guy to go get like there's a bunch of dead fish that just rise from the water Mm -hmm. and the water is completely still which is so uncommon in the ocean like Mm -hmm. they're not moving the sails not moving the boats not moving they're not even anchored down right and he picks up some of these dead fish in this bucket and when he pours it out on the deck it's just slime Mm -hmm. it's all slimy and gross and shit i want to add some weird shit like sirens coming out in the middle i basically just want to create my own like um sailor horror tale right right this is a short film or feature uh that's more of a feature one that i want right. to write out so i'm going to write it uh there's Better get cracking bitch i <laughs> know dude there is a uh there is a fucking short that i want to do the zombie one that i was talking about right and that one is basically uh this morgue owner uh gets brought a body in the middle of the night right before he's about to fucking leave mm-hmm. and they're like we need this done tonight Mm-hmm. And it's brought to him through the FBI. So mm-hmm. like, uh, and I want it set in the nineties. Right. So they're like, yeah, you can't record this. This has to be all paper documentation. And we're going to take it from you mm-hmm. afterwards. And when he takes out the body and everything, it's kind of mangled a little bit. And then it's like a whole thunderstorm. He has to call someone to come help him. And then the power goes out when he's just about to walk back into the fucking room. Mm-hmm. And then the thing is just standing there. Right. And then there's a really cool part where I just want him to like almost he gets bit in the face and I want him to punch the zombie in the face and his jaw is just going to be like hanging Mm -hmm. for like the duration of the movie. 
How much of this do you think is going to require VFX? A lot. A lot? A lot? Like, I am yeah. probably going to do almost the entire thing in Unreal Engine. Oh, you want? is this going to be like a test for you to see how much you can like do, possibly do? Yeah. The only part I'm thinking of, I'm like, well, A, how the fuck do I make a zombie's jaw fall off? Right. B, where the fuck do I get a good zombie thing? Right. But, you yeah, know, I would love to make that one. I have so many, so many ideas, but I get too many at once hard for me to slow down yeah i know dude you gotta get cracking on that script man you know how long it takes to write a freaking feature oh i know i mean i was writing a feature out of mpi mm -hmm. and i got to about page 25 before i got stuck and i needed to take a break and i've right. been taking that break ever since <laughs> and but like i wrote those 25 pages right in like what was it like fucking i don't even know dude i think that shit took me like a day but um I had to go back because there were so many spelling errors. Because when I'm mm -hmm. like in the middle of doing something, I just keep writing and writing and writing and writing. Right. And writing. Well, that's not a bad way to operate either. Yeah. You know, if you just keep going. And then I'll show someone yeah. the script and they're like, hey, you misspelled. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Right, right, right. Right, dude. right, right. right. <laughs> no, what I recommend is um, it's also just a really good exercise because this, this is what I do is mm -hmm. when I write, I'll put a, like a phone by me or have some sort of timer and I'll turn on the clock. Um, and the alarm will go off after one hour. So my rule of thumb is either I write three pages or I write for one hour, whichever one comes first. Mm -hmm. And if I write the three pages and I say I do that in 30 minutes, then boom, I'm done. I don't have to write for another, I don't have to finish the other 30 minutes. But if I can only get two pages out of an hour, then it's like, well, I only got two pages a day. But no matter what, like if you follow the formula um, in a week, you'll have 15 pages which is 15 minutes. And in two weeks, you'll have half an hour. In a month, you'll have an hour. And in two months, you'll have essentially a feature length film. Like, you know? Oh, dude. Another thing that I really want to do there's this guy who has this Unreal Engine course. His name mm -hmm. is Josh Tunin. Okay. Works on a lot of fucking movies. Mm -hmm. He just did um, uh, the Unreal Engine stuff for Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was like, dude, he has a course. It's like 500 bucks. I'm like, I think I'm going to fucking buy it because it's just yeah. so much good stuff that he's offering. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I think the main thing I'm just going to try to do is just improve in Unreal Engine because right. like, there's so much more that I need to learn. It's not an easy engine mm -hmm. at all. It's one of the hardest things I think I've ever had to do. Dude, and where can people find your stuff, man? Because you got a lot of shit out there. That's yeah. where I found you, man. Uh, my... I post a lot of my stuff on my Facebook, which is mm -hmm. literally my name, Logan Napolitan. Right. And then it's in the my, title, bitch. Yeah, it's in the title. And then my <laughs> Instagram, which is just Logan underscore, I don't know. Yeah, Logan underscore N O two. That's my Instagram. I post mm -hmm. some stuff there. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all my stuff. I've had multiple YouTube channels. I just never post. <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's that's everybody. That's everybody, I mean, dude. Yeah, I'm just trying trying to work better on that. I'm trying to not get sidetracked too much and just try to work on one unreal engine project while we're doing this mm -hmm. so i can learn more and i wanted to, i i really just want to make a simple short film in unreal engine right just to show like hey i can do this if mm -hmm. anyone else out there like you know i'm available for, right right right, right. yeah know? dude no nah, man i mean i'll tell you what if if the next I mean, I want to say years, mm -hmm. you know. It's probably um, going to be a couple of years. Probably a couple of years. By the end of the next couple of years, dude, I think you're going to have a pretty good resume. I hope so. I, I think I have a pretty good resume, and I think you're going to be pretty happy with what you what you get at the end of two years. Yeah, my, you know? my main goal is, like, what I really want is I want to be doing that full-time. Yeah. I want, I want to be doing what I want to do full-time because, like, right now, dude, I have some, like – Full time is a part time job. No, yeah, I got you. I hate so much, dude. That, dude. That's freaking. That's a lot of people, man. I know. That's that's most that's most of us, dude. And I mean, I'll tell you what. I think that I think if you keep doing what you're doing and you keep doing with the people you're doing it with, mm -hmm. and find more, I think that that idea of capitalizing on the visual effects sort of void right now in in Michigan, I think you could completely do that. And I think you guys could be super successful. And I think you guys could do that full time for sure. Mm. Because I mean, case in point, you know, I if I could have gone to a VFX team and said, Hey, I need X, Y, and Z, and they said we can give you that and more, 
why wouldn't I go to them? You know, but that doesn't exist. And so it's like, okay, we got to build that right now. And um, odds are, I'm not the only person who's like, man, I want to make this movie, but I can't because I don't know these people that can do these things on the computer. Um, Cause that's one thing is, is I like, I could have written a script that could have just been shot on the street, mm-hmm. you know, but my mentality was like, you know what, let's just see what happens when I leave, I keep the producer cap off my head and I just write the wildest thing that comes to, to my imagination. Cause, cause in my opinion, especially on this level, like you look at a lot of the films that get made, um, there's nothing like to me, there's nothing wrong with making a film about people, you know, and just people being people and finding themselves in these sticky situations and then finding a way to get out of those sticky situations. Mm -hmm. But that's the majority of the movies that get made on this level because those are just the only resources available to us, which is just each other as just people. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if we can figure out a way to, yes, tell stories about people. Okay. Cause that's what makes it relatable, but put them in the most absolute bonkers situation possible that cannot possibly happen. Uh, there's one thing that you did tell me. I was like, Holy dude, how the fuck are we going to do that? What did I say? <laughs> it was the face thing. Oh yeah. 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 yeah with the face. Um, dude, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But dude, Logan, this is fucking sick, dude. Yeah. This is fucking sick. And then, um, I mean, I'm sure I'll have you back on before we actually, we'll, we'll do another one before we actually sit down and, and film. Mm-hmm. Um, like actually film, not tests and everything. Cause we're going to be doing tests over the summer. Um, and obviously once you guys read the scripts and then, you know, see storyboards and everything, we're going to be building a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think that after X amount of time, if we come back with all the new knowledge that all you guys know, like even if we're able to get Jarjos on here with you, um, I think that we're going to be able to give people a lot of cool insight into what, what is we're doing. I don't want to reveal all the tricks. Absolutely. I don't want to reveal all the magic tricks. Especially like after like the movie comes out or even just with the tests that we do, mm-hmm. like we should definitely get mad on here and just do like a full like breakdown podcast. No, we will for sure. I think, I think, yeah, once, once the movie's done and out, like we can pick certain scenes mm-hmm. where it's like, let this was the hardest fucking thing for us to do. We got to break that down. Um, again, I don't want to give away all the tricks. Cause I think that's what allows at least some people to still watch a movie and be like, how did they do that? You know, like I you guys aren't fucking ready for anything. Yeah. You're not ready for anything, man. I do Logan. I'm super excited. Is there anything else you want to leave with everybody? Uh, no, I'm just happy to finally be doing this and I'm excited to see where it goes. Dude. I'm excited too, man. Thanks everybody for listening to watch our films, listen to our cast. We'll see you guys.